May I have your attention, everyone? We're about to start uh, the discourse. So I don't know if uh, those on the outside want to come in and have a seat. So we're going to start with a song. It's song number 151. He will call. And so if they get started, we'll be able to. Okay, so what we do?
Xavier Ufo. Xavier Ufo would have prayed. Our loving Father to Ufo, coming before you today really is one of sadness as they've lost a family member in death. We recognize, dear God, that this was not meant to be, but because of sin, one that passed away, and so it affects us. But you have made possible for us, dear Father, by means of his Son, to have the ransom sacrifice, that we can gain life, the real life that you have provided for us. So as we sit here this, this evening, and we reflect on our lives, and that of Hadon, we want to see what we can do to gain a good life, a good name with you, dear Father. So we ask forgiveness of our shortcomings. We want to thank all those who are here to support the family. We pray a blessing on our proceedings here this evening, Jehovah. And we offer the strength of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is a real sad day for all those who have enacted with Hadon. We know what type of person Hayden was, and certainly he would be missed. Hayden was born on the 24th of August, 1963, and passed away on the 14th of May, 2021. So it brings him just around 58 years of age, and so on. But what kind of person was Hayden? Well, I'd just like to read some of the, the excerpts from those who were close to him and what they had to say about Hayden. His mom said, growing up from small, Hayden was very obedient. He loved playing basketball. Even though he would come home from time to time with a single tape or fracture, but soon after, he'll be back on the basketball court. He got involved in the work, electric, electrician, being an electrician, as he did that in the Mount St. George Youth Camp in Tobago. She said he didn't love people. He always then made him want to do much to help person. He loved the army from small, and so it wasn't surprising, after leaving the army, he joined the police service. Anyone who knew Hayden knows he was unique. He was born with two extra fingers. I remember him more for the effect that he had on persons. Always positive, motivating, support, and willing. He was always looking out for his family, even if he hadn't spoke all that often. And so she quotes Job chapter 14, where it talks about, if a man dies, can he live again? And she ends up by saying, what a joy it will be to welcome you back, son, and to see you enjoy a productive life once again. Then we have his son. His son Sidel says, although we, haven't, we weren't close as I would like to be, us to be, there wasn't a day gone by when I didn't miss having my father in my life. One that would be there to teach me everything it takes to be a man and to show all the struggles that come with it. So I, w I always cherish every single moment we share together because I knew, I never knew when I'll get another. And now in your passing, all I can say is I miss you and love you, Dad. Hope we get to spend some time together in another life. His daughter said, I am one of the fortunate persons in the world. Hayden Spencer was my dad, and as I reached adulthood, I have known him as a friend. We didn't always see eye to eye on everything, of course, but he always offered guidance, support, and a listening ear. His nickname for me was Mouse, for some reason. I do not know where the name came from, but it stuck with me. Maybe to him, like a mouse, my facial expression said everything. He was strong in body, in spirit, and in commitment. 
He never missed a single event from kindergarten through high school graduation. Dad, your love, your patience, your understanding, your wisdom, and your amazing sense of humor will live on inside all of us forever. You have given us gifts that are more precious than any, anything in the world. Goodbye, Daddy. You will always live on in my heart, and I will continue to make you proud. I love you. Him. So these are some of the excerpts that were close to, to Hayden um, expressed. We know that Hayden was the, was the son of Christopher and Elaine. He was the father of Sidel and Haley, the brother of Anthony, Deborah, and Joanne, the nephew of Mervyn Deceased, Irvin Deceased, Fitzroy, Alwyn, and Thora, uncle of Rhea, Chantel, Siobhan, Kevin Deceased, Marlon, Keon, Kyle, Kieran, Lyndon, and Aaron, the great uncle of Abigail, Merlin, Kimora, Jaz Jazim, and Mito, cousin of Michelle and Camille, brother-in-law of Camille and Preston, friend of Roger Vidal, Cleve Camp Cambridge and others, colleagues of Senior Superintendent Seabrook, Inspector Charles, Corporal McConnell, Sergeant Holder, WPC Zervé, and many others of the Interagency Task Force and Hearts and Minds. So that is why you can see safely that today is a Saturday for all those persons who have interacted with Eden. It was very unfortunate that we lost Hayden to the pandemic. Very, very unfortunate. And so as we've known, millions of persons around the world are affected by this pandemic, losing loved ones in death. No matter how we hear the news, no matter how we, we, we get to know persons are dying, we're still gonna get accustomed to that news. Why? Why can't we get accustomed to the news of someone dying? You see, that was never a natural part of our life. It was not. So whether we die from sickness, old age, or unforeseen or on circumstances, unforeseen circumstances, the question has been asked time and time again. The question has been asked, why do we die? What happens? Why do we die? And that question has been asked, and yet still the satisfying answers sometimes have not been given. But clearly, the divine would help us to recognize why we die. And if you could just take a look, let's remind ourselves of, of why, where that came about. It's found in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. We're going to look at those verses, Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 16 and 17, and this is what it says. Simple. It says, Jehovah God gave this command to the man, from every tree of the garden you may eat to satisfaction, but as for the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it, for on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. Did Adam and his wife comply with this simple request? Well, not really, because when we look at Genesis chapter 3, and we consider verse 18 and 19, this is what it says, showing that it did not comply. Genesis chapter 3, and verse 17 says, And to Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife's voice and ate from the tree concerning which I gave you this command, you must not eat from it, curse is the ground on your account. In pain you will eat is produced all the days of your life, it will grow thorns and thistles for you, and you must eat the vegetation of the field. And verse 19 says, In the sweat of your face you will eat bread, until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for thus you are, and thus you will return. So Adam and Eve actually paid the consequence for disobedience. They died. But how does that affect us? How do we get involved in this? What effects did their disobedience have on us? Well, it certainly did. And in what way? 
There's a text in the book of Romans chapter 12, 5 verse 12 tells us this. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. To show how we end up in the state of, of death. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 makes the point. It says, that is why, just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because they had all sinned. So from Adam, we inherited the imperfection. And so as a result, we all died. So what does that mean for us? Does it mean that all is lost? Does it mean then that that's a cycle? We born, we grow, whether it's sickness, etc., we die? Well, that's not what God had in mind for us when, when he created the first man. And certainly, that purpose is still there. How do we know that? God is such a God of love that even in the case where we lose someone in death, as in the case of Hadon, he made provision. What is the provision that he made? It's a text that we know well to show how much God loved us. It's found in the book of John, chapter 3, and verse 16. John chapter 3, and verse 16. And this is what it says. A text we all know we heard so many times, but just to remind ourselves of it. John chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed, but have everlasting life. God loved us so much that he sent his son to purchase back what Adam had lost. So there'll come a time when what had happened to Hadon and the millions of persons throughout the earth would not be happening again. Because God has made the ransom sacrifice possible for us to have everlasting life, as he said. Everlasting life. Even though Hayden passed, could we see him again? Would we be able to see him again? The Bible says that even though a person dies, they can live. How do we know? We go back to John, in the same book of John, and we look at chapter 5 and verse 28 and 29. And Jesus Christ, making this point, he says, Do not be amazed at this. For the hour is coming in which all those in the memorial tombs will hear his voice and come out. Those who did good things to a resurrection of life. Those who practiced vile things, a resurrection of judgment. There will be a resurrection. So that's why Jesus said, do not be amazed at this. It will happen. How could you believe it? You know, many persons look at the Bible and he said, listen, the Bible has written so long ago. It's not, it's not even relevant to our time. Those promises, look how long people dying. Well, so how could we have confidence that the resurrection will take place, that we could see our dead loved ones again? What confidence do we have? Who could we build confidence in the world? Well, let's just, let's just take our mind to what it says for a particular period of time and see if those things are happening and if they do, then we know that what the Bible says, not only in the past, but for the future, will also come to play. So what does it tell us? In the book of Matthew, Jesus Christ makes a point here. And let's see if what Jesus Christ said for the next couple of scriptures, if these things are taking place. And if they're taking place, what does it do to our confidence? Looking at Matthew chapter 24, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, we're going to look at verse 7 and 8. Matthew 24. And look at verse 7 and 8. It says, in a particular period of time, it says, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be food shortages, and earthquakes in one place after another. All these things are a beginning of pangs of distress. Have we seen food shortages? Just recently, we had a schemate between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And we know there are other instances of wars taking place. 
What about food shortages? We know that it's on. Earthquakes, we know that it is on. We read about it every day. There's a parallel account to Matthew, which is found in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 21, making the same point, but it highlights something I want us to pay attention to. In the book of Luke, chapter 21, and there it says something in verses 10 and 11, making the same point, it's parallel to Matthew. In verse 10 he says, Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in one place after another, food shortages. And you know what he says? He says, pestilences. Pestilences. Are we seeing pestilence taking place? We had SARS, we had MERS, we had foot and mouth disease. Now we have COVID-19. And if you didn't know, up to this morning, they were saying that there's another virus looming in China. Four, seven persons have already died. 60 persons are infected. And so they're saying to the world, pay attention to what is taking place. What does that tell us? Could we have confidence in God's word? I just want to use one more. I just want to use one more. There's a text found in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And there in that text, it tells us how people would be in the last days. You listen to it, and you tell me if you're, in those, if you're seeing these things. It said, but know this, that in the last days, critical times, hard to deal with will be here. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, haughty, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, disloyal, having no natural affection, not open to any agreement, slanderers, without self-control, fierce, without love of goodness, betrayers, headstrong, puffed up with pride, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having an appearance of godliness, but proving forces from up and from these still away. When we examine the world, this is what we're seeing. So friends, the point I'm making here is this. The Bible, for us to have confidence in it, there must be evidence. Huh? So we just look at a number of things that are taking place to show that what the Bible says, we can have confidence in it. And why we did that? You see, for the future, there are things that the Bible predicts that will take place. The things that are affecting us, what it is. In Isaiah chapter 33, verse 24, it tells us when we could look forward to this. This is now for the future. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 24, this is something that we all will look forward to. 3324 says this. And no resident will say, I am sick. The people dwelling in the land will be fighting for the error. No residents will say, I'm sick. Why? Because sin, which covers with the ransom sacrifice, will take care of sickness. Not only that, in the same book of Isaiah, chapter 25 and verse 8, again, you can look forward to this. See what it says. It says, He will swallow up death forever. And the sovereign Lord Jehovah will wipe away tears from their faces. The reproach of his people he will take away from the earth. For Jehovah himself has spoken. So death will be no more. Once sin has the ransom sacrifice, take care of sin, death will be no more. And the reason why we're going through this is because we can see what the future holds for us. Right now, if you look on the horizon, what do you see? You don't know when we come out of this pandemic. You just don't know. And it's getting worse and worse. So the Bible is telling us there's hope. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, also make the point for us. And that's why we can have confidence in, in, in his word. Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4, makes this point. It says, 
With, a, with that, I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, the tent of God is with mankind, and he will reside with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. Look what verse 4 says. And he will wipe out every tear from the eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning nor, nor crying of pain be any more, the former things are passing. That's, what, that's, the, that's the hope that the Bible holds on for us as humans. So we've seen evidence that what the Bible says comes true. Presently we've seen that, and now we're saying there are things that it predicts for the future that we could have confidence in. So that how could we benefit from the provision that he's making for us? What can we do? Well, while we're here and we recognize that that is before us, Clearly, the positive thing we could take from us today. Positive thing. What is that? Life for us is very short. Very, very short. He didn't live to, to be 58. Some of us may get a little older. Some may die a little younger. But the reality is, life is pretty short. What could we do? But in the book of Psalms, Psalms 90 verse 12, you want to do what the psalmist said. The psalmist said, listen, teach me how to count my days. In other words, what can I do to bring my life closer to God? How could I live in a way that is pleasing to Him? So while we're here at the funeral and so on, it brings a reality check. When would this thing happen to me? Remember, you don't think about it. It doesn't come into the mind because it's not a natural part of our lives. But while we are here, we certainly want to, you know, give thought as to, good, my life is short. What can I do to bring my life closer in harmony with God's will? Well, we should strive to make a good name with God, the way we live. Well, just remember when we went through Second Timothy, it shows how people would be, that natural love, that camaraderie, that togetherness is not there. That's what God wants us, how he wants us to live. So when we, when we live our life that is pleasing to him, it brings joy to his heart. In the book of Proverbs 27, verse 11, let's, let me just highlight what I said to you. We talk about how we can make Jehovah's heart glad. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, and verse 11. And he's expecting all of us it says, be wise, my son, and make my heart rejoice, so that I may make a reply to, to him who is, taunt, who is taunting me. So the way we live makes a big difference, right? The way we live. So as we reflect, we can see that, one, there is going to be a resurrection. We want to benefit from what the Bible says in that respect. But the only way we could do that we have to find ourselves in sync with God. We know the work is distracting. There are so many things going on. But we want to bring our lives in sync with God. Something else too. The family will need your support in the coming days. Could you give them a call? We know we can't visit because of COVID. You might not even be able to give them a hug. But could we give them a call? Could we find out how they're doing? That's what we want to do, friends. That's what we want to do. We want to support them. Losing someone in debt clearly is, you know? So certainly, we want to do that. And then you want to remember, one, the three W's, wear our masks, watch our distance, and wash our hands. So we want to thank you and behalf of the Spencer family for coming. And so we want to close now by using song number... Right. Someone to be nine. After which, um, they will present the, the picture at this point. So you want to just do the song to close and then say a word of prayer, and then we'll have the picture presented to the family. Okay? So.
Okay, so we just go to the prayer and then we, we have the right. Our loving Father Jehovah, our loving Father Jehovah, really, really coming before you, dear Father, is always a privilege. We want to thank all those who are here with us this evening for the support of their family. We want to thank them very much and pray that they will continue to support the family in the coming days. We know that that is not part of your purpose, dear Father, and so you put things in place to take care of that. So may we continue to look to you for guidance. We are really in a dilemma with this pandemic. And so we want to follow your instructions. We want to follow what has been said so that we can really safeguard ourselves. Dear Father, we are thankful to, for all that you have done and continue to do for us. And we look forward to the time when all of this will be done. So may you bless us, may you guide us as you offer the spring of your son, Jesus Christ, even. And so now we have... So now we have um, the presentation of the picture. So the family member, please come and get it. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I am Senior Superintendent Subero, who is in charge of the IATF, and who would have worked very closely with Officer Spencer. Spencer lived and worked a life true to the motto of the Trinidad Police Service, where he served the community with pride, he was well respected, and on behalf of the Commissioner of Police, I want to extend our condolences to the family and make this presentation.
ਕੰਮ